All right, guys, so here we are. We got the Sony a6600. I have my Samsung Galaxy S8, and I have a cut on my finger here. <laughs> All right, so anyways, seriously, check this out. It's, it's really not that hard, guys. Bear with me. Uh, trust me. Um, I'm going to walk you through this, and it's, it's not that big of a deal. We will get through this together. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the camera on. And so just for argument's sake, I was at my mom's house the other day. I took a picture of her adorable dog, and I want to send her the picture, but I don't want to wait until I get home to get the images off my camera. So what I'm going to do, there's a button here on the back of the camera. It's called the FN button, known as the function button. I actually did a whole tutorial video on the function button, but when you're in playback mode, so if you hit this play button on the bottom here, just click that button, that'll bring you into playback mode. And now I am looking at a picture of my mom's dog, and I wanna send that picture to my mom, right? Here's what I'm gonna do. If you hit the function button, it brings up, there's a little picture of a, a mobile device with an arrow next to the function button. I have it up on the screen right here, so check that out. And if you hit that, it says, send to smartphone. See that? Send to smartphone. I'm going to click, yeah, send that to smartphone, this image. Correct. That's what I want to do. All right. So then what it's going to do, it's going to put the camera into Wi-Fi. It's going to enable the Wi-Fi and it's going to bring up this QR code. A lot of people are saying that this is not coming up on their camera. Now, I don't know why that is. I need more information. On the newer cameras, this is how it works. This is how it works on the A6400, the A6100, the A6600, and the RX100 Mark 7. Those are the most recent cameras I used to use this imaging app software. I have not tried this on older cameras than that so it's possible you have an older camera like an a6000 or an older rx100 or whatever and it's not doing this and if that's the case i'm sorry you'll have to do it another way there's other ways to connect using passwords and things like that but i would need an older camera to actually make a tutorial on that specifically so this is for people using the newer cameras like the a6600 for example so the qr code is there now what i'm going to do i'm going to open up the imaging edge app and it's right here on my phone and here's what it looks like when the app pops up these are the options you are presented with so it's saying what do you want to do i want to connect to a new camera so i'm just going to click this plus right here to connect with a new camera and now it's saying turn your location information of your smartphone on okay so that means i don't have my gps on you have to have your gps on in order to use this so enable that and now my gps is turned on on my samsung to get to that i just drag down from the top and there's that little icon there that icon there stands for gps so you do have to have that on when using this app to transfer photos for whatever reason i'm not exactly sure why but it's that's what it's got to be so then you click connect to a new camera and now here's your options and right there it says scan qr code and it's showing you a picture of a camera with the qr code and it looks exactly like what is shown here that's what i'm going to do scan qr code then what it does is it enables the camera on the phone so see how my phone is now in camera mode and you just hover over the qr code like that and it took a picture of it and notice it says scanning complete so we are good i'm going to click ok and it says the smartphone is already connected to another wireless connection which makes sense it's connected to my home wi-fi so it's warning me that there might be a problem just to let you know and if you do have a problem basically disconnect from your home wireless but this seems to work anyway and you can see now it is connecting and it just copied the image over see that items copied so you just click OK, and now that item is on my device. As you can see right here, you could view it on your device right there, and there's the picture. So that's how it works, guys. There's really not that much to it. If for some reason this doesn't work, just stop the process, you know, click cancel or whatever, and try it again. Just try the process again. If that doesn't work, turn the camera off, turn the camera back on, try it again. If that doesn't work, close the app. You know, you can go in here on the Samsung devices. You can click this little, the three lines on the bottom, and that'll bring up all the different apps. You could just swipe up, and that will close the app. Then you could reopen the app, and it's basically resetting everything. Now look, now that I connected to the A6600, I have in here, it's in the camera list. See that camera list? It says 6600 right there. So now if I wanna go on the camera here and pick another image, like this one's here is cute. Let's see what else I got. There we go, that's a cute one. So I wanna send that image to my, to my mom, let's say, right? So I'm gonna click the function button, which is also the send to smartphone option. See that? This image, yes, this image, correct. Now Wi-Fi, it's going into standby. Now I don't need to scan that anymore. The 6600 is already in my camera list. I'm just gonna click the 6600 and it's gonna connect to the camera. See? 
connected to the camera and it's it's taking the image off and there you go and then if i go to the home screen i can go to my gallery right here gallery and you can see up here the images were from yesterday you can see the images right and now i can just click the share button like right here that's how it works guys there's not much more to it than that if it doesn't work like that for you let me know in the comments below and we will you know, we'll work through it but I'm telling you, I've, I've done it probably 50 times now over the past year, and this is how it always works for me. I don't have a problem. I also used my iPad, and it worked exactly the same way, and that's an Apple product. So I understand if you have the latest iPhone and stuff with the latest software, it might not work with the Imaging Edge app until Sony releases an update, and that really sucks. And that's definitely a factor. It does happen, and unfortunately, there's really not much you can do except get that cool adapter I told you about and just take the images off the memory card that way until the software updates all right guys so now I want to show you how to remote control the camera and again it's a very simple procedure but if you've never done it before it might not be working for you because you just might not be doing it the right way so what you need to do first on the camera is you need to go into network one and you need to go to control with smartphone option see that option there and you're just gonna click the center of the navigation wheel here to go in there and you're going to turn the control with smartphone option on that is uh, by default set to off and then as far as always connected i would leave that off but you can choose to leave that on if you want your camera to always be ready to to connect and that can definitely be useful if you're in a studio environment and you just don't want to deal with going through the connection option the other way to do it if you don't have that set to on by the way that will drain the battery like crazy so that's why i leave it off but just go to connection and then click that option and then that will turn the Wi-Fi on for you. Now your camera is ready to connect. All right, so now I'm gonna open up the Image Edge Mobile and I'm gonna say connect to the 6600 because I already connected to the camera, remember? So it's in my camera list. If it's not in the camera list, just go to connect to new camera and you're gonna have to scan that QR code. So I'm just gonna click the A6600 and it's gonna connect to the camera. And there you go, you could see it's connected. And now it's telling you, starts remote operation, yeah. Do that, start that. With the connected camera images during continuous shooting can be reviewed or saved only on the camera. Okay, it is necessary to set Bluetooth to off in the smartphone when the movement of the shooting screen is not fluid. So it's gonna use Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi for this function and here you go. Now you have remote control of the camera. So because I have this set to rapid fire mode right now, you have to hold it over and it's gonna take multiple shots. So I'm gonna turn that feature off. I don't want it to be on rapid fire mode. So you go up here to change that and I'm gonna to turn to single shooting. And now if you just press this button in the center, it'll take the photo. And it's automatically copying the photo over to the smart device and it's also saving it on the memory card. So it's a great feature. Now if I wanna to go to movie mode, for example, I have to switch the, let's see, go to menu. And you have, again, limited settings or limited options here because I'm using the Sony a6600. If you remember from my other video, I was using the RX100 Mark 7 and you had way more options in here. You were able to zoom in and out. You were able to change the camera modes and all sorts of stuff. You're much more limited when it comes to the a6600 and mirrorless cameras. Like I can't change the camera mode. It's not an option, it's grayed out. So you have to change the camera mode on the top of the camera. So I'm just gonna change the camera mode to movie mode right here, right there. So it is in movie mode now because I have the record option and I'm in aperture priority mode in movie mode. So I can change that to the different exposure modes. I'm just gonna leave it in aperture priority mode, but now I can hit record. So you remember when I started this video, I said you could use this as a remote control to start the camera recording you, you know, if you're like vlogging or something. And this is how you would do it. You would set the camera up to video, you know, movie mode, you'd connect to the camera and then you could use your phone as a remote if you're sitting at your desk and the camera's a couple feet away, it's a great way to do it. And you just hit record and now the camera is recording. And then you can stop and it'll stop recording. So that's how you do it. It's, it's that simple, guys. And there's just basic functions in here that you can change if you wanted to. And, uh, you know, I went over all that stuff in the other Imaging Edge app. I did a more thorough job as to what all these features do and stuff. But I just wanted to clear some things up for those that are still having a hard time and just show you again how it works with the A6600. It, it just works. Like, you can get the images off really easily. Again, they're lower resolution images, but it works. You can remote control the camera, but you're 
you're very limited with the functions. It's not the same as the RX100 Mark 7. Depends on the camera you're using as to what functions you have. But you could use the shutter, you can hit record, you can change a couple of settings depending on what mode you're in. Like if I'm in aperture priority mode, I can change the aperture, for example, and so forth. And it's a little bit slow because it's communicating with the camera, so you got to give it a second. But, you know, that is what it is. It's, it's not, like, again, it's a little bit finicky, but it does work, and it's a great feature if you need to remote control the camera from your smart device. At the end of the day, that is pretty much it. All right, guys, so that is pretty much it for this video. I really hope that cleared things up for some of you guys that were having a hard time with the Sony Imaging Edge mobile app. It, it Like I said, it is a little bit finicky, but as you just saw walking you through it, it works really well with the A6600 and my Samsung. And I also tried it on my iPad, and it worked exactly the same way. There was no difference, so I didn't even bother showing it. There wasn't anything I had to do different. It worked exactly the same. So depending on your software revision with your iPhone or your Android, the app may not work like on, when an update just comes out or something like that. But other than that, it really worked well. And the only thing that you have to remember is it is a lower resolution image file. And the app really is not intended to just take all the raw files off your camera and transfer them to your tablet if you're using your tablet for editing, like mobile Lightroom and stuff like that. It's really not designed for that. So below I have a link for a device that will do that for you. It's a simple, you know, little adapter that just will plug into your iPad, your iPhone, your Android device, and you can just put the memory card in and you can get the images off really easily that way. And you can do it like on the street. This little thing will fit in your pocket. And that's the solution that I think will solve your problem if that's really what you want to do. And that method will be fast and more reliable anyway than using the Wi-Fi connection of the camera. So again, I really appreciate you checking out this video. And if, if it helped you out, you know, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Let other people know that this video is worth checking out, you know? Other than that, I do have more Sony A6600 videos coming at the time of this recording. So stay tuned for that. I will catch up with you next time. Please have a great day and take care.